a show about arousing the senses coming up right after this. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to Garden to Table. I don't know about you, but I love the flavor of really good food. The fresher, the better. You know, our mouth and our tongue, well, there are thousands of little taste buds in there that have sensory nerves that indicate to our brain the subtle differences in foods. You know, of the senses, taste is the weakest, you might say even the sleepiest of the senses. But in today's show, I've got some recipes using some fresh ingredients that'll bring those taste buds alive and wake them up. We're gonna learn how to plant a citrus herb container and incorporate these herbs in a pineapple sage pound cake and lemon verbena honey. Plus, I'll share a few tips on growing lemon trees and rosemary. We'll also make a very simple tea with fresh herbs and I'll share ideas on creating the perfect tea for two tablescape. Well, as you can see, we have a lot to cover in today's show, so why don't we get started with that citrus herb container. You know, I'm always looking for ways to bring unique flavors into the kitchen, and there's no better way to do it than with citrus herbs. That's right, citrus herbs like this lemon thyme, or this pineapple sage, or this wonderful orange mint. You see, not only do I use these flavors in desserts, they're also great for entrees. To create a citrus herb container for your home, just start with a 20 inch diameter terracotta container and fill it about one inch from the top with a good potting soil. Next, dig a hole larger than the biodegradable peat pot that the pineapple sage is grown in. Tear off the bottom and the top edge of the pot and place it into the soil. Plant the pineapple sage and fill in with potting soil. Now repeat this process with the orange mint. You'll notice the fragrance immediately just while working with the plants. Then plant the lemon thyme to complete the set. Be sure the plants are equal distance apart in the container. Lastly, water the plants thoroughly. Within a few weeks, you'll have a beautiful container that will add new flavors to your kitchen. One of the easiest ways to make your home smell really great, particularly if you have guests coming over, is to create a simmer pot. It's really very, very easy. You can start these simmer pots a few hours before you have people come over. Sometimes I'll do them just because I want the house to smell really great just for myself or like around the holidays. So let me give you an idea of how to just put one of these together. All you have to do is start with about four cups of water. and You want a good sized saucepan, just pour in the water. In this case, what I'm using are some dried lavender blooms, one cup of those. And then I'm using one cup of fresh rosemary out of the garden and half a cup of eucalyptus. Mm, it's really got great aromatic oils. Well, in fact, all of these botanicals have. It's gonna make your home smell really fresh. Now, I'm just gonna stir this around just a bit and I'm gonna turn the stove on. You see, the idea here is that you don't want to boil this. You just want it to simmer for a very long time. And as the water begins to recede, just add a little more water. And this will permeate your entire house with a lovely, lovely aroma. Now, one of the things that I've learned over the years is that if you use these dried herbals, the essential oils in those plants is really concentrated as opposed to using fresh. Now, I'm not saying don't use fresh because they're lovely. I mean, look at this thyme. Here's some oregano, fresh rosemary, basil. All of these can be used, but they're not gonna have as much punch, so you're gonna need to add more. In fact, you're gonna have to add twice as much as you would if they're dried. Now, cinnamon, for instance, has its own sort of connotation. I like to use cinnamon in the winter, particularly around the holidays, because it gives it, well, that sort of festive holiday aroma, which puts everybody in the right mood. The great thing about this approach is that you can come up with your own concoction, and that's what I really encourage you to try. This is just sort of a basic starter, or you can go to just about any grocery store and find these dried elements. Combine them and come up with something fun. I remember my aunt telling my sister once, she said, even though you're not a very good cook, put something on the stove, let it simmer, and everybody will think you are. Have you ever met anyone who doesn't like pound cake? 
I love this stuff. And this is a simple recipe for pound cake with just a little bit of a twist that you can bring right out of your garden. It's pineapple sage pound cake. Of course, pound cake is derived from the fact that you use a pound of flour, a pound of sugar, a pound of butter. But this one goes way beyond that with a flavor sensation you're gonna love. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take two sticks of butter and we're gonna combine the butter with one cup of sugar. We'll use this with the mixer. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your butter has been sitting out as at room temperature. Okay, with the butter and the sugar almost blended together, you can see it has almost a cookie dough consistency. I'm gonna add a fourth a cup of honey. This is just the beginning of the flavoring. Then what I'm gonna do is take four tablespoons of fresh pineapple that's been chopped and the juice wrung out of it because you really want that delicious pulp. You don't want too much water in this cake because it will mess up the consistency in baking. And then take the zest of one lemon and that goes in. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the eggs. You can see how dark the yolk is. So I'm gonna add these one at a time. Next, you wanna add some chopped pineapple sage. This came out of the garden, and I just wish you could smell the aroma in these leaves. It smells distinctly like pineapple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break off enough leaves to get about three tablespoons, and I'm just gonna take this and mince it into little fine pieces. This pineapple sage is a beautiful plant for the herb garden or just the garden in general. What I love about it is it takes full sun and it produces these really bright red, scarlet red flowers that butterflies and hummingbirds adore. You can see it just didn't take any time to work up that. You just wanna add it. Okay, now for the dry ingredients. Since we had salted butter, that's what we use, we don't need any salt, but I've got, here's a teaspoon of baking powder, two cups of flour. What I'm gonna do is just mix this together, and I'm gonna fold this into cake batter. Now with the flour and baking powder all blended together, I think the batter looks just fine. So what I'm gonna do is use these little mini loaf pans. This is enough batter for four of these loaves. These little loaf pans are six by three inches wide by two inches deep. And what I'm gonna do is just divide this batter into fourths. Okay, now they all look even. Next, just place them in a preheated oven, 350 degrees for 45 minutes. And when you take them out, I'll just let them cool on a baking rack for about 10 minutes. These are well cooled and can be eaten at any time or put in the freezer. These make great gifts. And I love them sliced in the morning with just some butter, toasted, mm, toasted pound cake. And with this pineapple sage pound cake, you're gonna wanna make plenty of it. You know, lemon verbena is really a fantastic herb. Just look at this. Well, I wish you could smell the aroma. It's fantastic. It smells just like fresh lemons. And this is a plant that will add both texture and fragrance to your garden. And it will grow, grow in the heat of summer, up to six feet tall and eight feet wide. Just make sure that it gets plenty of drainage and keep the soil consistently moist. And it loves full sun. Now, to take advantage of this herb, one of the best ways is to use the essential oils in the leaves in a lemon verbena honey. The simplest recipe you'll ever make in your whole life. All you need is lemon verbena, some honey, and a jar. Now, I'm using just a pint jar here to illustrate this recipe, but you can fill up a quart jar if you like. What I like is a jar that has a wide mouth on it. And then what you wanna do for a pint jar is just take lemon verbena leaves, I've plucked them from the stems, I've washed them, and then I've patted them dry. And once they're dry, you just wanna take about a half a cup of lemon verbena leaves. And what I like to do is loosely fill the jar and then begin to fill that jar with honey. A little honey go in and add a few more leaves. And you wanna completely cover the leaves. And see, there we go, we're filling it up. The longer it sits, 
the tastier it becomes, because what happens is those essential oils infuse the honey, and so you get this lovely, fresh lemon honey. It's great in tea. You can drizzle it over ice cream or desserts, nuts, or even cheese. I'll just seal this jar off. I can keep it in the cupboard for months and months to come. So give it a try. My name is Alexis Jones and I am from Madison, Mississippi and I'm in Little Rock right now, the owner of Natchez Restaurant in the Tower Building downtown. So I started cooking when I was in college. I do a lot of long cooking processes, so I do a lot of braising, pickling. I'm trained in classic French cuisine. How that influences a lot of the ways I cook my food. I like using ingredients that people aren't always quick to pick up. The recipe for today is a spicy catfish with farro and root vegetables. I like the spicy, almost Asian aspect of it. Well, I get my catfish from Mississippi. It's a Delta Pride catfish, and I, I cut it into about one ounce pieces. It's marinated in lemongrass, garlic, ginger, fish sauce, rice wine vinegar, and some sambal. Sambal is a chili garlic sauce. Yeah, this is a combination of um, cornstarch and just seasoned flour. And the cornstarch just kind of helps it get a little crisper. I'm getting my pan hot, and I coat my pan with some grapeseed oil. It has a higher smoke content. Okay, so I'm taking the catfish from the dredge, going straight into the hot pan. Okay, just gonna add a little bit of butter to the pan. It's about a tablespoon. It helps the browning process. Also, it adds flavor. I add some butter and then I just flip it around so that it cooks evenly. So I let it get a good sear. So these are our pickled shallots and they just add a little brightness and acidity to the dish. About an ounce of pickled shallots and about three or four tablespoons of peanuts that are picked up in the pan to roast. Just a little toasty. I'll just let this sit, get another pan hot. I'm cooking my vegetables for the farro, so I add my carrots, an ounce of carrots, same amount of onion. Use about half the amount of rutabaga. And I try and get these the same size so that they cook evenly and cook around the same time. And then parsnips, about half an ounce. And um, I'm just trying to get the onion translucent and a little bit of color on the root vegetables. I'm going to season with some salt and hit a little butter in this pan as well. So they're starting to brown, they're cooking through. And now it's going to add the farro to this. So I use probably three or four ounces is a good portion size for farro. It's very filling. Let that cook through. Two scoops. And add the catfish to the pan. So I'm gonna finish with some fresh black pepper and a little coarse pink Hawaiian salt. A great gift idea for the holidays is to make homemade bath salts. It's really easy to do. Simply combine a fourth a cup of coarse sea salt and a fourth a cup of dried herbs, one cup of fine sea salt, into a food processor. It's best to use fragrant herbs such as lavender or mint. Here we use mint. You want to blend this in the food processor for about a minute on high, which will produce a fine powder. Then pour the blended mixture into a sandwich bag and add about a fourth of a cup of baking powder. Seal the bag and shake vigorously to mix all the ingredients together. Finally, take the contents of the bag and pour it into a decorative airtight container. Get really creative. You see, this will make a personal gift for someone very special.
Have you ever grown a lemon tree from seed? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. I did a little experiment. You see, all you have to do is pick up some lemons at the store, and that's what I did here. And then you have to decide whether you're gonna peel this little outer husk off of them or not. And so uh, once they dry a little bit, you can just peel that little outer husk off. So there you go. So there's one that has the husk off of it, and here's one that still has the husk on it. Well, with my little experiment, what I learned is that if you peel the husk off, they germinate about two weeks earlier. But these were done, half of them were done with the seed husk on and half with the seed husk off. And you can see by now, which is some three months later, we're well into spring, they all are about the same size. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about trying to pull the husk off those dead gum seed. So I'll plant these into larger pots over the course of the summer. And what I like to do is start things and hold things in my greenhouse, then move them outdoors. And today I'm moving all my citrus trees outside for summer vacation, like this one. And you can see it's growing up to be a nice big lemon tree because it's eating all of its fertilizer just like it's supposed to be. So I'll put it over here on the back side of the greenhouse with some of the other citrus trees. So this is gonna become sort of citrus world back here. They'll love the sun and they'll love all the fresh air. And what I try to do this time of year is make sure that they get plenty of sun. Citrus love full sun. They like plenty of circulation. Mm, the flowers are fragrant. And if you look closely, you'll see I even have baby lemons. Look at those. But I wanna make sure that there are no insect problems. And then I wanna make sure that they're fed. So I give them a, a good dose of food this time of year. Just by sprinkling a little bit on top. I could use an organic. And then to keep the soil consistently moist, I make sure that I use saucers like this uh, to place them on so that the soil doesn't become dry because I don't want them to drop any of the fruit. Now, if I want this little tree to grow faster, what I would do is take some of these lemons off and let the energy go into making a bigger plant rather than trying to produce some lemons. That's a decision I'll have to make a little later. Right now, I'm just getting them outside and letting them enjoy a little fresh air. Out here on the porch is one of my favorite places to sit and have a cup of tea, have a good conversation with a friend. It's really relaxing just about any time of day, but especially in the morning. The little tablescape I have here is very simple. We can just start with the touch of green we have in the way of herbs, some rosemary, parsley, and sage work beautifully. You just bring them out of the kitchen just to adorn the table. These herbs can certainly be used later in cooking. And then as far as what I've used to set the table, I love these platters that I found that are in the form of trays. So they're great for bringing things out. I love having dual purpose dishes or dishes I've found in bargain or secondhand stores, like these vintage English cups. Actually, these are antique. And this petalware, which was popular in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. By going with white or clear tableware and using a couple of these vintage napkins, it ties it all together. Then when it comes to the food, we've got a nice tea, we've got this lovely lemon verbena infused honey, and the pineapple sage pound cake. With all of these herbs here, this is a feast for the senses. A creative way to add a little flavor to recipes is to infuse sugar with your favorite herbs. The wonderful uses are endless and the sugars make wonderful gifts. Start by selecting three or four sprigs of fresh herbs. Good choices for infusing sugar include lavender, mint, rosemary, sage, or thyme. Remove the herbs from their stems and gently bruise the leaves by crushing them with the back of a spoon. Now you don't want to make a paste, but you do want to release the oil in the leaves. So when you can smell the herbs more fully, you can stop bruising. Next, place the herbs in a good sized bowl, then pour two cups of granulated sugar on top of the herbs, a little at a time, stirring the herbs throughout the sugar. Then place the sugar mixture in an airtight jar and allow it to stand for two days in a cool, dry place. 
After two days, then remove the lid and stir the mixture again to evenly distribute the herbal essence. The herbs still have moisture in them and stirring the sugar will keep it from clumping. Make sure you repeat this process every few days. You see, the infused sugar should be ready after about two weeks of storing and stirring. Plus, the sugar will have absorbed some of the herb oils and the herbs themselves will have begun to dry. If you're planning on giving herbal infused sugar as a gift, just tie a ribbon around the lid of a jar, make it more decorative. You'll find rosemary a really easy herb to grow if you just understand a little bit about its background. For instance, it's a Mediterranean herb, so it likes warm temperatures, it likes a, a dry, almost arid environment. But you do need to make sure that the roots stay consistently moist. You don't need a lot of water. Rosemary doesn't like to stand in water either, so if its roots or its feet stay wet too long, that's not good for it. You'll also find that rosemary is not cold hardy throughout the country. Most varieties will not survive below 15 to 20 degrees, but don't let this keep you from growing rosemary. You see, this herb is ideally suited for container gardening. I keep a container of rosemary just outside my kitchen door. If you bring rosemary inside for the winter, put it in a sunny window, south facing is ideal, and be careful, again, not to overwater it. You see, those roots can easily rot, and an occasional misting will help it if it gets too dry in your home. So think about it this way. If you buy rosemary fresh in the grocery store, you've seen the prices, it can be expensive. So why not just keep a container of it where you can clip it any time you want? You'll have a great savings and you'll have one of the most aromatic herbs at your immediate disposal. You know, what's marvelous about this is it can be used in so many ways. For instance, I love to strip the leaves off and use the stems for kebabs. Uh, you can garnish plates and platters beautifully with these beautiful green fresh stems. There's innumerable recipes you can use rosemary in, even for teas. You'll find this is a very easy way to make tea using fresh rosemary and lemon. All you'll need is a fourth a cup of rosemary leaves, half of the lemon sliced thinly, and one and a half quarts of cold water. Pretty basic. With the back of a spoon, simply bruise the rosemary leaves to release the oils and place them in a large jar along with the lemon slices. Then pour over the water. Seal the lid of the jar and set it aside for about four hours to steep. When the tea is ready, remove the lemons and the rosemary leaves with the strainer and serve it over ice with lemon slices and rosemary sprigs as a garnish. This tea recipe will serve about six and can be easily doubled. Now realize this tea is unsweetened, but you can add a little sugar if you want to sweeten it, or I love to use honey. The point here is just to enjoy it. It's hard to believe that we're already out of time, but I hope you've picked up some helpful tips and ideas in today's episode. And I hope you'll try those recipes, especially that pineapple sage pound cake. Until next time, good eating and good health. Funny plant. I go in you there, yeah, okay. All right. Ah, we can hear you. Okay. Ah. They know we do a garden show here. They're, they're, they're new. They're new. Yeah. And action. Look at you. You are just looking great. Fabulous. Hey, I know you can do it. I want you to grow up and be this. You see this? I want you to grow up to be this. Crazy about hydrangea, my cousin. Oh, Sorry. well, I would think anything looks better on Ace than me. There we go. <laughs> Tweet more. <laughs>